Yo guys, how's everyone doing? It's DBS Nitro here, or you can Nitro. Today we're back at it again for another What If. This time, for a continuation of a previous What If. Alright, so as some of you may have seen, towards the end of the previous What If video, I put a poll asking which What If should be next. A continuation of the Piccolo obtaining God Key What If, or a mystery What If. Most of you voted for the Piccolo obtaining God Key Part 2 What If. So, here it is. What if Piccolo obtained God Key? If you haven't seen the previous part, I highly recommend that you go watch it to gain a full understanding of what's going on here. Anyway, without further ado, let's get straight into it. So we start right where we left off from the last video, which was a mysterious fat purple cat had arrived onto Beerus' planet. He and his attendant are revealed to be Champa, Beerus' brother, and his angel, Fados, was his sister. He had come to challenge Beerus to a competition, brotherly spat if you will. After they have their little food competition, they would get the idea of a tournament and once the details are finalised, Goku and Fujio would be tasked with creating a team and would have 5 days to do so. Though Beerus says that if they aren't able to find 5, he will be able to secure a fighter. Alright, as for the Universe 7 team, Goku and Fujio are, of course, guaranteed to be on the team. They immediately jump to recruit Piccolo and Gohan. Goku would ask where Fujio thinks they may be training. Vegeta says Gohan seemed very serious about training the last time they heard, so they would most likely be at the hyperbolic time chamber. First, they will need to locate the final Super Dragon Ball though. After requesting for Bulma to make a new radar and leaving it to her, they will discuss heading over to the lookout. However, on their way to Dende's, they would both sense two large keys in the distance and would head there. To their surprise, it was Krillin and Tien. Turns out, they had decided to train after seeing how much their gap had widened over the years with Piccolo and Vegeta's battle against Freezer, Krillin would joke about that being their cue to come out of retirement. Goku would compliment them on their dramatic growths and ask if either of them would like to join. After explaining, Tien would politely decline, saying he hasn't grown to a level he's satisfied with yet and would like to polish his skills more. Krillin at first would also decline, but after some nudging from 18, accepts the invitation. After this, they would head over to the lookout and would be greeted with Dende and Popo. Here, they would find out that Dende had tweaked the time chamber to allow for people to spend longer inside, though Gohan and Piccolo were currently training inside. From here on, until the tournament, they would all train in a hyperbolic time chamber, with Krillin and Tien joining around the third day with the extra supplies courtesy of Bulma. Seeing as how there isn't actually a limit on how many people can enter, and the only restrictions are food, I don't see how this wouldn't work. As Piccolo is a Namek, I don't think he really needs to eat much. If I remember correctly, Nameks only need water. As for the other three, until Tien and Krillin arrive on the third day, they could take rotating turns on who leaves to get more food, or they could ration what they do have. So eventually, five days pass, and the time for the tournament has come. Once at the tournament, after they finish their test and get the results, the matches commence. Krillin goes first, and he's up against Botamo. Yeah, this is a pretty straightforward fight. At first, he would find Botamo troublesome, what with his nullification thing and all. But with Krillin being the crafty, nimble warrior that he is, he would fire a scatter blast, covering Botamo's vision, then blindside him with a full power Kamehameha. Though it wouldn't inflict damage, he would use the force to push him out of the ring, kind of like how Gohan did in main canon. Next up, Frost. Now with this fight, it's a very difficult one for Krillin. He's very nervous, seeing as this guy looks exactly like Frieza. Though this guy is acting very polite and humble, this shocks Krillin as he's used to Frieza being well, Freezer. But this guy almost seems the opposite. He even extends his hand for a handshake before the battle, which Krillin would cautiously respond to. Though he seemed nice, Krillin didn't trust him one bit. He had noticed that he hadn't transformed yet. Maybe he hadn't discovered the transformations yet? Nah, seeing as he had been picked to fight for their universe, this would be highly unlikely. He would think about just asking him directly but decides not to, as chances are, he would just deny it. But Krillin has a plan to force him to bring it out. Once the fight begins, it would clash, and after trading some blows, it would be clear that Krillin was superior. Frost would spin, attempting to hit Krillin with his tail, but would do so too slow, allowing for Krillin to grab his tail. Using his tail, he would repeatedly pull him closer, only to punch him again and again, before swinging and throwing him away. Before Frost could recover, Krillin would jump back before sending a large energy wave at his direction. This severely damages Frost, However, Krillin's not done just yet. Just as the smoke clears, Krillin would launch a solar flare times 100, blinding Frost significantly. This is Krillin's chance. While blinded, Krillin would launch a Kamehameha at Frost. This would hit Frost and send him towards the end of the ring. As he's getting pushed, Krillin would shout to him, telling him to transform. 
Frost, having no other option, would do so. He would transform, even skipping his third form to go straight to his fourth. This is due to the intense power he had felt from the Kamehameha, and he now felt that it was no time to be holding anything back. Again, they would resume their fight. It would seem a lot more even now, with seemingly nobody being ahead of the other, though this would change once Krillin gets serious. Out of habit, or maybe out of certain memories, he'd constantly keep his distance and not let up. He would shoot a Kamehameha at Frost, forcing him into the air. He would then launch a chain of Kianzans at Frost. Frost would manage to dodge a few, but it would start getting tricky once Krillin added about 4 or 5, 6 and it was basically Krillin's win guaranteed. It would cause them to all charge at Frost, detonating them just before they would come into contact with Frost, setting off 6 massive explosions at point blank range. The barrier would also take some damage from this. Frost would collapse outside the ring, defeated by Krillin. For the next fight, Krillin vs Magetto. Now, for this matchup, it would be hard enough as it is. What with Magetta's insanely hard skin and heavy weight, not even a Super Saiyan could lift. Still cool BS on that one, but whatever. So add in the fact that Krillin's already been through two matches and it's extremely fatigued, and yeah, sorry Krillin, but it's about time for you to go. Besides, I don't think Krillin would insult him, as it wouldn't make sense for him to randomly do so in a fight. If anything, he'd probably insult himself or something, say he's too weak or something. Though I do believe that Krillin would have had a chance if he were at full power, as I don't think only insults are the only way to beat Magetta. You'll see what I mean soon, but at least he lasted two matches though. Gohan would be next. He was going to go after Piccolo, but was eager to show off the fruits of his training. Gohan would remember the results of the tests, specifically how Magetta had barely passed. Using this information, he would deduce that, drum roll please, Magetta is a dumbass. <laughs> Seriously though, this is good, as Gohan would have also got to watch Krillin's fight with him, so he would know he's just more of a brute force fighter with a gimmick that can be utilised against him. Where some people see Magetta's metal body as a benefit, Gohan sees it as a big downside. He comes up with a plan and instantly puts it to action. As soon as the battle begins, Gohan disappears from sight. Upon a closer inspection, he'll just be moving really fast, around the surrounding area of Magetta. Kinda like how Goku did as a kid in the 20 second Budokai. Though with Goku, he was more so trying to find an opening, whereas Gohan was testing Magetta and how fast his reaction speed was. He would move slow enough for Magetta to react in time, but fast enough to evade any attacks that Magetta would try to dish out. In addition to moving fast, he would also shoot barrages of key blasts at different angles. Once he had gotten a gauge of Magetta's overall abilities, he would switch to the offense. With no warning, he would fire off a Kamehameha. As Gohan predicted, due to Magetta's heavy body, he wouldn't be able to dodge in time and would be forced to block. Big mistake. Gohan's plan was to force out Magetta from the ring and it seemed to be working. And just like that, Magetta is eliminated. Yep, seems pretty simple, but that's really all it takes. Since he more or less figured out Magetta's exact reaction timing and attack speed of his lava attacks, all he had to do was shoot the Kamehameha faster than he could react and boom, he's toast. I guess all those calculations may have been a bit excessive, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Plus, I kinda wanna emphasize on Gohan's planning and strategic abilities more. Next up, Kaba. As Kaba enters the ring, Gohan would ask if he were a Saiyan, to which he would say he is. Gohan would then reveal that he is a hybrid Saiyan, much to Kaba's surprise. They would both be curious to see how each would fare against each other. Kaba more so intrigued to see how a hybrid Saiyan would fight. It begins, and they would seem to be about equal in terms of power. Though Kaba would be more nimble due to his smaller stature, Gohan would make up for this in his ability to read his opponent's movements. This match would be intense, with neither showing any signs of slowing down anytime soon. Gohan, noticing this, decides to stop playing games and warns Kaba that from now on, he'll be fighting on another level entirely and would advise Kaba to go Super Saiyan to be able to keep up. Kaba would be confused and ask him what he means, as he had been fighting at his full power. Gohan would be a bit taken aback by this, seeing as how he was a Saiyan and so young, yet so strong. It was hard to believe he hadn't reached Super Saiyan yet. Gohan would demonstrate what he meant, transforming into a Super Saiyan. He would ask if he could do this, to which Kaba would respond no. He would then request for Gohan to teach him this transformation. Gohan would pause for a bit, thinking through his request, before accepting it. He would explain the basics of Super Saiyan and how it's a transformation that has many triggers, though the best comes in response to a need not of a sire. He would then ask Kaba if he had any enemies, and Kaba would say lots, as he was a part of the Sadalo defense force after all. Making enemies is kind of inevitable in that job. 
He'll then ask him to put himself in a scenario where he's watching everyone he loves murdered by these same enemies, telling him that it's his fault. He would then tell him to try to remember these feelings the scenario brought up. This would cause Kappa to start to get angry as he would close his eyes to begin tapping into that Super Saiyan power. Though this wasn't enough, Gohan, taking his father's words to heart, figures out a way to help Kappa achieve Super Saiyan. If power came in response to a need, then he will just have to create that need. When he opens his eyes, he would see nobody in sight. He would look around for Gohan and would see a Kamehameha approaching him fast above him. He would just barely have time to counter with his Gallic Cannon attack. From above, Gohan would shout that he truly believes Kaba can achieve this level and would tell him to keep trying, though Kaba would say he couldn't. Gohan would then say if he couldn't get to this level, how would he ever hope to win this tournament? If he couldn't even do that, then he would have no chance in ever helping anyone. Kaba would tell him to stop, but Gohan would continue, saying that it would be pretty humiliating that someone from a defense force could fail to see the enemy literally right under their nose, and to lose the tournament on top of that, Kaba would shout for him to stop as he tried to push the Kamehameha wave back, but to no avail. Gohan could feel it, he was getting close, just one more push. Gohan shouts to him, saying whatever happens after this, regarding Frost was his fault, as he couldn't achieve Super Saiyan. Whatever rampage Frost may decide to go on next, or whomever lives he takes, their blood will be in his hands. This would do it. Kaba would unleash a massive amount of tea, transforming into a Super Saiyan and shouting back saying he would never let that happen. As he would push back the Kamehameha wave, he would say it may have been his fault for not noticing sooner, but he wouldn't let Frost do as he pleases anymore. Gohan is forced to dash out of the way of the incoming blast which collides with the barrier, destroying a portion of it. Gohan would look back to see Kaba appear directly in front of him. He would throw a barrage of punches even Gohan at first would struggle to block. He would manage to grab one of his fists and spin him around. He would then throw him back into the ring creating a small crater within said ring. As Kaba emerged from the smoke, he would look up to see Gohan smiling. Gohan would descend before praising Kaba on becoming a Super Saiyan so quickly. Kaba, realizing that this was a part of Gohan's plan, would calm down and thank Gohan. Though Gohan would be too busy apologizing to Kaba to notice. Kaba would say it's fine as it was necessary for him to achieve this. Gohan would ask if he could do it again and Kaba would be able to. Gohan would smile and congratulate Kaba saying now he should aim to master the Super Saiyan form and after that he should aim to go further beyond. He would then go to Super Saiyan 2 as he said this, showing Kaba what to aim for. Kaba would be astounded at the amount of key he was emitting, thinking Super Saiyan was the pinnacle. He thought he had a lot of key, but this made it a joke in comparison. Gohan would say, while he did enjoy their talk, it was about time that they ended the match and Kaba would agree. Gohan would shoot a Masenko, which Kaba would dodge and shoot his own Gallic Cannon. Gohan would go full power and fly through the attack, surprising Kaba. He would try to block but wouldn't do so fast enough and would be knocked out of the ring, thus ending the match. Gohan would help him up and Kaba would respond, thanking him and refer to him as Master. Gohan would insist for him to call him Gohan instead. He would comment on Vegeta being a more better mentor for him as they have a lot of similar moves, but Kaba would look to Vegeta before saying no as he seemed too stern and angry to which Gohan would awkwardly laugh at. Kaba would offer Gohan to visit their planet, and Gohan would be intrigued by this, as he'd never thought about his own heritage deeply like that. He didn't even think about the origin of planet Vegeta. He would accept Kaba's offer, and they would go their separate ways. Finally, Hit had entered the ring. Unfortunately for Gohan, he had no knowledge of this Hit guy's abilities, so he was entering new territory. As the battle starts, he would play it safe, going Super Saiyan 2 right off the bat. They would begin their fight and Gohan wouldn't be in a winning position. Every time he'd attack, Hit would somehow counter. No matter how fast or which angle Gohan attacked from, it would seem as if Hit always knew where he was coming from. It is then revealed that Hit is somehow able to skip short intervals of time. Once Gohan realizes this, all he has to do is figure out how to predict and counter Hit's time skip ability and its game set and master him. This takes a couple more tries and he has to take some hard blows from Hit. But eventually, he figures it out, though it may be too late, as he had used up a bit of energy, what with Super Saiyan 2 and all. He would aim to end it the next time Hit performed the time skip, though Hit, realizing what Gohan was plotting, decides to take no chances and power up his time skip capabilities from 0.1 seconds to 0.5. Big mistake, as he leaves himself wide open, and Gohan isn't one to take chances. Instantly, Gohan uses his full power and charges at Hit. Hit is hardly able to react and quickly tries to time skip, but due to Gohan interrupting his progression, he isn't able to do it for long. 
Pitt is just about able to reach Gohan and land a couple of hits on him as his time skip runs out. Though Gohan is able to pull through these attacks and deliver his own, a full power punch. Due to the tremendous 5 plus years worth of training Gohan had received, all that was necessary was one punch at full power to take him off his game. Though Hit is able to divert the damage received by blocking and moving his rate, the impact is devastating enough. This causes Hit to collapse in pain. Though due to Gohan taking so many precise hits from Hit, he is too weakened to continue and also collapses. As they are both unable to continue, this match results in a double KO. And due to Universe 7 having more fighters, they win by default. After the fight, Seno arrives. Senna would say he had taken an interest after learning what this tournament was and would decide to create his own. After this, Beerus would make his selfless wish to resurrect Champa's Earth. After this, everyone would go back to Earth. Unbeknownst to them however, there had been a certain Kaioshin apprentice who would be watching their fight and had taken interest in one of their fighters in particular. Who was this Kaioshin apprentice? Why had he been so interested in Gohan's fights and how would this affect the future? Find out next time on What If Piccolo Obtained God Key. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed that What If as much as I like making it. Trust me, it's actually pretty dope to make. Uh, sorry for not being able to upload last week. It, it, it's kind of like I had a uh, I had a writer's block because I, I was trying to write a What If, right? But it, it just, I don't know, I just couldn't, I couldn't continue. Like I kept having to stop and start and stop and start and it was really, it was really awkward. But yeah, to make up for that, I will upload I will try my best to upload two what ifs this week. So whenever this is uploaded, just expect another one coming right after. Not too soon, but like two days after. So uh, yeah, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this what if. I hope you guys can be patient enough to wait for the next one. And I will see you then. So don't forget to like and subscribe.